Summer and I, as you now know, did our presentation on hereditary sensory and autonomic neuropathy. Um, it is known as HSAN for short. So HSAN includes a number of disorders that are associated with sensory and autonomic dysfunction. Sensory dysfunctions can include depressed reflexes, altered pain perception, altered temperature perception. And autonomic dysfunction can include gastroesophageal reflux, postural hypotension, and excessive sweating. There are five distinct, form, distinct forms of HSAN, and they are one, two, three, four, and five. For the epidemiology, each form has a different prevalence. HSAN-3 is almost exclusive to individuals of Eastern European Jewish, Jewish extraction. HSAN-4, um, several hundred cases have been reported. And HSAN-2, it is worldwide prevalence it's, its worldwide prevalence is very low. In HSAN1, it is the most common type. And then HSAN5 is very rare, and only a few people with this condition have been identified. HSAN are rare diseases. They affect both sexes. They are inherited. And HSAN2 through 4 are autosomal recessive and have onset at birth. So for the different types, HSAN1 is autosomal dominant. Onset is between adolescence and adulthood. Um, you can see loss of pain and temperature sensation in the distal part of the lower limbs and sweating abnormalities. This, a, this has subtypes um, A through E, and it's based off of what kind of mutations occur. Uh, for HSAN2, it has onset in infancy or early childhood and is non-progressive. It is profound in universal sensory loss and hypotonia. And it is autosomal recessive, has no sex preference or specific ethnic prevalence. HSAN3 has onset at birth and is progressive. It can result in multi-system dysfunction. It has characteristic it has a characteristic facial expression that may develop over time. It imposes the greatest impediments to function, and you can see absence of tears with emotional crying. HSAN4 has onset in infancy. It absent or decreased sweating is shown. It involves mostly ectodermal structures, such as skin, bone, and nervous system, and it affects the trunk and upper extremities. And finally, HSAN5 also has onset at birth or infancy. Uh, deep pain perception is especially affected here, pain from bone injuries or muscles, and then bone, fr bone fractures or joint injuries could go unnoticed. Okay, so each of the types of HSAN is due to a different gene mutation. So for type 1, this is the only autosomal dominant one, and it happens at the chromosomal location 9q 22.1 to 22.3, and the gene affected is SPLTC1. For type 2, it's osomal recessive, and it happens at the chromosome 12P13.33, and the gene affected is HSN2. For type 3, it's also autosomal recessive. The chromosomal location is 9Q31 at the gene IKBKAP, and then for type 4, also autosomal recessive, the chromosomal location is 1Q21 to 22, and the gene affected is NTRK1. And then for 4 uh, or for 5, the transmission, like whether it's recessive or dominant, is actually not known, and also the chrom chromosomal location is not known, um, but the gene affected is also NKR, NTRK1. So here are the different, different clinical features for each type. So for type one, um, what is like specific about this one is it's in the lower limbs. So loss of pain and temper, temperature sensation in the lower limbs specifically. For type two, um, it's profound sensory loss with marked hypotonia, which is decreased muscle tone, which you can see in that bottom picture. Um, it really results in like a lack of stiffness. Um, as you can see in that baby, like it can't really hold himself up. Um, for type 3, like uh, Cassandra mentioned, it shows um, specific facial, facial features and severe kyphoscoliosis. So in that first picture, you can see as 
the girl gets older, she is her upper lip is flattening and then her lower jawline is becoming more prominent. And then the bottom picture is what the severe kyphoscoliosis would look like. Um, for type four, this is the one that um, mainly involved the skin, bone, and nervous system, and also has an absent or a majorly decreased sweating that you can see. Um, that picture is showing the distorted left knee and ankle, and then also you can see the skin aspect with the darkened skin over the ankle. And then for type five, the rarest one, um, this is deep pain perception is severely affected. So you have an inability to feel deep pain, which can even mean that you could um, break a bone or injure a joint and it could go unnoticed, you wouldn't even feel it. Okay, so for diagnosis, um, the diagnosis is based on the unique clinical features that were just mentioned in the previous slide, and then the degree of sensory and autonomic dysfunction, and also to differentiate between the different types. Um, there's a quantitative assessment of dysfunction and identification of particular clinical characteristics. For um, HSAN in general, you can do an intradermal histamine phosphate test. So with all types, um, there is a lack of a normal axon flare in response to the intradermal histamine phosphate. So for this test, a quantity of 0.1 milliliters of histamine is injected into the skin. And in a normal subject, you would see a bright red histamine flare due to capillary vasodilation within five minutes. Um, in the picture below, you can see the difference between the two. So the top one is an affected person with HSAN, and you just see a, nar a narrow axon flare, just that small red circle. And then the bottom picture is a normal person, and you can see a large diffuse axon flare around the entire area, so the whole arm um, reacted. Okay, and then the treatment. Um, there, it, the treatment is really just management for each symptom specific to each type. So for type one, you're gonna to wanna to focus on treating foot ulcers and infections. This can be done similar to treating diabetic foot care. So using orthopedic care, such as well-fitting shoes. For type two, um, if gastroesophageal reflux incurs, occurs, then fundoplication is recommended. And what this is, is a surgical procedure where the top part of the stomach is folded and sewn around the lower esophageal sphincter in order to increase the strength of that valve to stop acid from backing up easily. Um, for type three, this one um, can be the hardest one to manage because the symptoms can be pretty severe. So one symptom is alacremia, which can cause corneal ulcerations. Um, so frequent, for this, frequent administration of topical lubricants like eye drops can help with this. Um, you can also experience gastrointestinal dysfunction where in the fundo duplication can also be used for this. For respiratory dysfunction, um, someone may go through therapy to help with swallowing issues. And then for blood pressure issues, it is recommended um, hydration, exercise, and medication. For type four, they really can uh, work on managing hypo hyperthermia and treating orthopedic problems. This can be done with braces and also regular inspection for injury. And then type five is similar to just really manage the, the symptoms and also inspect for injuries because the person might not even be aware that they are injured because of lack of pain perception. And those are our references.